Greetings, everybody. This is Jeff Scott. It is December 17th, 8 a.m. Obviously, futures are not out yet, and this is my weekend review. I titled today, Markets at New Highs as Tax Cuts Loom on the Horizon. Uh, with Corker and Marco Rubio supporting the cuts, it seems to take any intrigue off the table. Um, even if McCain or Cochran are unable to uh, make it to the vote. So we should have these cuts. We should have them before Christmas. Although clearly, if any aberrations in that occur over the next couple of market trading days, the market will sell off. And then it'll be interesting to see if we go up on the news or if the, uh, the market is a buy on the rumor, sell on the news scenario. But time will tell. Even if we sell off on signing, I think the market goes higher and that we're not at a top. This session, as always, is for educational purposes only. Any recommendations are the spirit of education, not investment advice. I'm a doctor, not a broker. I am independent, which means I'm not affiliated with any software vendor or brokerage house. If I say good things or bad things, they are my own personal views and do not reflect anything that others have told me to say nor have they paid me to say. Trading involves risk. You and you alone are solely responsible for any decisions you make. And if I do discuss options, which is not my plan tonight, keep in mind that there are those that consider options to be increasingly more um, risky. I entitle my education series that I just gave and that I do occasionally. And I think based upon the reviews, it was another positive experience. I always entitle it to be your own guru. Um, I think you need to take those influences that you think to be positive. You need to learn from them, pick out what you like, and then over time, put together your own training plan and become your own guru based upon things that you have learned. So I'm not a guru. In the words of Ian Woodward, I hope to help you become your own guru. So I'm a mixture of can slim as improved by Morales, catcher, and then taken to HGSI with Ian Woodward and Ron Brown. Van Tharp, Position Size and Money Management. John Person, a great trader, educator, developer, author. And then my buddy George Lee from Western Canada. And I've amalgamated what I am become, adding a little David Elliott, Stephen Bigelow, um, Alexander Elder, and I have my own style, which I call Be Your Own Guru. And I recommend each of you do your, the same, not necessarily the same influences I have, but the influences that work for you. I own every tool on the book, um, pretty much. I, I, it's hard to stop me. But what I really need, I need my trading platforms, HGSI, free analytics, EdgeRater to supplement HGSI, and it has its own benefits. And then I do use seasonality from time to time in a number of websites. Here's the website for HGSI. Again, I have no ownership, financial interest. I get no commissions or bonuses. If you hit free 30-day trial, it brings you up to an order form that doesn't require a credit card. If you go to investing strategies, even if you don't um, sign up, there'll be hundreds of videos that I've done, Ron Brown and others. If you are new to HGSI or you get lost by my vocabulary, Email me at hgsidoc at gmail.com and I'll send you a short video that reviews the different signals. Stock patterns are cyclical. Uh, HGS stocks fall like rocks. They go up like rockets. You need to know where we are in the phase of a pattern. And as I've said, for a year now, it almost feels like we keep pretending to roll over and we take another leg higher. Think about the NASDAQ and FANG stocks two weeks ago. Therefore, you have to adjust on the fly your trading approach. So I go from periods of all in to caution to all in to caution. And right now, at least this week, I was pretty much all in, although it wasn't all good. <laughs> a couple of days were tough. Um, certainly ended up strong. It was a positive week for me, and I'm sure a positive week for most of you. Um, as you can see in green here, hard to find losers on Friday, um, period. I mean, financial strong, um, energy not as strong, mixed at best. Biotech and healthcare were strong. 
so it was a very strong week in the market or a strong end of the week in the market. It was a little topsy turvy based upon the headwinds out of Washington. Quickly, just to jump into Think or Swim to take a look at the major markets, and let's just break it out so it's easier for all of us to see what I'm talking about. I think the pattern in equities is pretty clear. We have a lower left, upper right, nice uptrend, closing at the high of the year on the E-mini futures. OBV is strong. Um, how is that not a bullish looking picture? Um, it's almost, but not quite a bullish engulfing pattern as well. It's got a new PPS buy signal um, closed um, at the top of the range, was up over 1%. The two force indexes are positive. Had a mobile breakout and a daily bongo. Turns out I can add a weekly bongo to this, so maybe I should add that too, since I find that to be even more important. I want the Bongo Weekly label. There we go. So now I see a Bongo Daily and a Bongo Weekly are positive. Very strong market on the E-minis. If I take a look at the NASDAQ futures, also closing at the high of the week, of the day. Closed at 97.3% of the range. Um, did have a kahuna. Um, what a big day on the NASDAQ futures. And they've been in a buy, week, buy signal for about a week. If I look at the Dow futures, also closing at their high, or at the high of the week, hit the high of the week, high of the year, um, it appears, closing high of the year, and um, trades 88% of the range. So the indices are super powerful, super strong. Yes, they've had a long run. But as the work I showed during my live meeting, I think they have more to go. Um, IWM, the least strong, it gets a run up, pulls back, a run up, pulls back. Touch the, the yellow line here, which is the 50-day moving average. On Thursday, and had a nice move up on Friday. If you notice above, that was on big volume. They're probably the primary recipients or one of the biggest recipients of the benefits of the tax cut, nearly 172% of average volume. If you look at it, one day change of one and a half percent, five and 10 day pocket pivots, forces were positive, MOBO breakout, Bongo daily, and um, I'll add the Bongo weekly to all these charts later on. Thanks to Bob Meager for all the think or swim indicators. Now, you notice all the red here? <laughs> You notice it finished at the uh, bottom third or bottom 16th percentile of its range. This is the VIX, and the VIX hit the low on this period of time. Now, clearly, that's not the low of all time or low of the year, but the VIX is at a place where it has bounced before. I want to point that out, but certainly there's complacency in the market. You've all heard when the VIX is high, you buy, and when the VIX is low, you, 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 you sell. I'm not a total proponent of that. I think a rising VIX coming off a bottom is a time to sell. A falling VIX is a time to buy. Complacency can continue to last a long time, as we've seen now for quite some time. And if we look at the, the, the dollar, dollar stuck in, some, in between some moving averages here. It showed some strength on Friday. Um, not, let me just put the weekly on for a second so let's, and show you something there. And you'll notice on the weekly chart that the dollar is just pegged to this 200-week or 1,000-day moving average. So it'll be interesting to see, does this hold? It's going up the rising moving average, which is bullish for the dollar. But if this breaks down here and stays down there, then you'll start to see a gold rally. Until then, gold has been pretty tough. So markets are obviously quite strong. So I don't make a mistake and think I'm looking at dailies when I'm looking at weeklies. Let me go back here. All right. Mm. 
And then sometimes I just like to put this chart up here because it allows me to look at them all at one time. Daily, weekly, and monthly by rows. Columns are E-minis, NASDAQ, Russell Futures, New York Stock Exchange, and the Dow. And I guess the only thing that's not on a new buy signal is the NYSE, and it's close. Um, everything else is either been in a buy signal, E-mini, Na uh, NASDAQ, even Russell, and Dow. On the weeklies, everything's in a buy signal. On a monthly, the same. This is what a strong market looks like. It's strong until it's not strong anymore. I do expect corrections to occur. I expect perhaps at the beginning of the year, if we don't get one before year end, once people sort out the tax changes and when they should take their losses and their wins. But boy, what a strong market. So a couple of things that I saw last week, you can't see it well, but certainly the 30-year bond, its rates fell a little bit more than the 10-year. So I guess that's a flattening of the rate curves. So they softened despite a hike, which is kind of interesting. I can tell you on my weekend review, did not see a lot of strong looking banks, although there were a couple of like SIVB, I think, or SVB, one of the um, regional banks made my list. Um, didn't see a lot of dividend payers either. Um, yes, on the REITs, but not on the MLPs. Didn't see a lot of utilities pop up. Um, did see some home builders with the weak rates, that was for sure. AD lines, whether I look at small to medium or I look at large, they're hitting new highs, so the AD lines are positive. Here's breaking out in white, the NYSE AD line, and then the major indices, and you could see that I guess the only laggard here in orange is the IWM, and it's hardly lagging at all. So AD lines and indices going up together. Breath. Um, number of stocks above the 200-day percent and above the 40 remained about the same. Above the middle, strong, but certainly not overbought. Adding to the lack of overbought signal, this is my three-month new high, new low indicator. And this is a very quick, when it gets up to the top, the market always reverses. When it gets to the bottom, the same thing. We're just sitting here in the higher range, but certainly not at the top and more room to go. The Daily McClellan, um, this was a little bothersome. It looked like it might be a zero line reject here, um, but it's right back up at the zero line on the daily and the weekly. There's no extremes here. I don't see a signal. I'll continue to watch those. More evidence of a market that is hot but not overheated are the buckets. 60% of the stocks are above the midline in their Bollinger Bands and the S&P 1500. Here's where the slices end up and not enough stocks to, are over or under to give me a signal. There is no evidence of Hindis on the NSA and, and the NASDAQ or the NYSE. Um, we had some concerns in November. We did see some rockiness in the market, but whatever negativity was sitting there seemed to be, um, what's the word I would say, um, mitigated some by the tax debate. Market tone, um, chop to bullish remains. We have a lot of bullish um, spiders um, specifically and others are green. Nothing's red over the last week so I'd say improving market tone and even the sector is the only thing that's showing um, red is the utilities. So I would say both market and sector strength continues to firm, certainly not excessively if I look at the canaries in the coal mine, um, you know, beautiful uptrend continues, pull back here, broke the 50, This was worrisome, but they didn't break, and they now look like they're ready to break out again. You look at the index that I put together back June 27th of leaders at the time, and you could see how it ran up at that time. You know, it's still in an uptrend, guys, and it's almost near an all-time highs. It looks like it's ready to break out again. No you news and earnings. Um, I looked at this and um, a couple things popped out at me. Very little Fed head speaking. Neil Kashkin speaks here. Not a lot of data except for some treasury sales on Thursday and um, weekly jobless claims. It's a relatively modest news week. If I look over on the right, at earnings dates, the things that you probably ought to pay attention to are 
um, Carnival, so Cruise Lines, Lennar Home Builders, um, Darden Restaurants, Micron Technology, Red Hat, FedEx. We'll get us a early read on what the holiday season is. John Person's favorite retail outlet. I'm kidding. Bed Bath and Beyond. <clears throat> Nike Shoes. So not a big giant earnings week, but some big players despite coming into Christmas time. So my thoughts, the markets rose and fell on tax cut probability emotions, ended up on a high. Friday rally driven as Corker and others signed plan onto plan and barriers to approval appear to have been overcome. Fed raised and project three to four more raises in the next year, but market rises as yields fall. While worry continues, whether it's Korea, whether it's the controversy about moving potentially the Israeli embassy, the White House becoming a sitcom and Flynn in the Russian probe. Um, but the markets do like to climb a wall, worry until it stops. Remember, it is not different this time. There will be a correction. However, still feels like we have a nice run ahead after potential profit taking in the new year period. Um, I read somewhere over the weekend about, and I can't remember how many weeks it's been <clears throat> since we've had a 5% correction. And they were suggesting that it was the longest period of time without a 5% correction in the S&P ever. I guess this will be one more week added to that, most likely. Our agenda, introductory comments, which I've done, followed by a market review, top-down analysis, and as time allows, some bottoms up. Let's go on to the charts. Maybe next year you'll come down and visit me in Florida. Uh, we had a great meeting. Uh, it's had great reviews. For those that are attendees of the meeting, we will have a session Thursday again. Um, thinking 8 o'clock to review, to do my one-hour review. All right, so let's just jump into TradeStation real quick. As I've said before, if mine looks different than yours, it's because I have the 10.0 uh, beta version, which is actually pretty darn good. Um, and it looks better too. But let's start with the E-minis. Very strong, so you should expect something similar on each of them. It's been in a buy signal for quite some time on daily, weekly, and monthly. It's got the red dots on the daily and weekly, which is evidence of MACD divergence. So basically, you have a lower peak here, despite higher highs. So that would suggest decreasing participation. The S&P needs to take a break. Now, a break could be sideways. It doesn't have to be a big fall, and nothing says it can't go higher. So the first thing we look at then is the buy sell. The second is the color of the paint bar. Green is bullish. Red is bearish. Blue is neutral. Third thing I'm looking for are these red dots. Fourth thing is where is the price in relationship to the auto envelope? It's way above it. Fifth thing I'm looking at is the high jump bar. We'll talk about that in one second. And then the last thing is the bongo lights. This is a on fire, overheated, super strong market. It is unusual to have a high jump of 100%. That means it's the most extended it's been in the last 200 bars on a daily chart. One usually sees a sideways or a correction or at least a slight um, pulling back or slowing down at this point. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm, I'm, you know, but with this tax thing coming, it may just get even higher and higher. So with that high jump, um, I really do expect sideways. I don't expect a big pullback. And you know, next week we could be saying it's even higher and still at 100%. You have signals to give you clues, and that's a clue of a little bit how overbought we are in the S&P. How about the NASDAQ? Above the envelope with the red dot, um, only at 73% weekly bond goes green. Um, also kind of overbought, um, but not as danger zone as perhaps the S&Ps. The Dow, ninety-six percent. No dots here, dots on the weekly, a blue bar as it went sideways a little bit more. And then what about the Russell? Um, 66, 
a new buy signal coming in. So that means maybe Russell leads this week and the S&P lags because of its extension. Now, this is a super, super strong market. I can't remember the last time I saw 100% on the, uh, on the high jump on the S&P. Um, I'm going to take that as an indication of strength. But with the asterisk of when you're this extended, at least on the high jump, that's why we have it. It takes years to break a high jump record. So is this the time we break it? We'll see. The dollar. Doesn't look as bad here on the daily. A green bar. On the weekly, daily, weekly, and monthly, it's in a sell signal. And the weekly bongo did go green, so maybe the dollar is going to rally. And then the VIX. Sort of at the bottom, it's interesting, it had a buy signal on Thursday and sold off on Friday. This is just the kind of market we had this week. Um, kind of near the bottom of where it gets. You can see the high jumps down to 19, the weekly bongos red, um, VIX is weak. So the, and then if I just look at yellow gold, yellow metal, YG, you can see a new buy signal came in. But really on the bottom, as it got below the the uh, the channel, the envelope, and notice that the, let's see if I can get this to show up. Uh, one more time. High jump got down to 4.75 here before it bounced. So I see a super strong market a little bit overheated, especially on the E-minis. Let's open up HGSI. Let's go into Woodward & Brown User Groups. Let's go into Major Markets Plus. Let's hit the Warehouse View. And then let's rank them based upon t the T1, my top, the top-down analysis view, and see the strength in the market. No surprise was the NASDAQ leading with small caps up at the top. Gas, VIX, oil, dollar, commodities, gold on the bottom. Interestingly, some of the bigger stocks lag the smaller stocks. All right, let's take a look at some of our favorite indexes in HGSI. Just want to point a few things out to you. So we're up near the top as we t on the E minis on the S and P 500. We're not quite at the top. That's one thing. So there's a little difference there. Remember, these are the indexes versus the futures. Let's go to a cleaned up chart. So I always have the eight day exponential. The green is a 17, blue is a 50 simple, and the red is a 200 day simple moving average. Up on the top, I have my weekly bongo, my daily bongo. Then I have two different ways of measuring the Hindenburgs. I have my high jump bar, and um, down here I have the kahunas. And on the lower, if there was, a, I don't know if I have the phoenixes. I, mean, I should add the phoenixes to this chart. So let's just do that. So I'm going to edit chart view. Edit. Yep, I do have the phoenixes here. So they're just not firing right now. No phoenixes or eurekas. All right. So what can you say? Super strong move. And I've talked about pullbacks to the 50 multiple times. That's an old arrow. At some point, we're going to come back to the 50. Um, it's not even a 5% pullback. It's inevitable. Just seems to not want to happen anytime soon. Dow looks the same way. Again, similar arguments. Um, NASDAQ, super, super strong, but not at all extended. Right in the middle of the high jump. Had a kahuna on Friday. Look at the volume with options expiration setting an all-time high on the close. And then the Russell 2000, also strong, move a strong move off the 50, but not quite to where the others are, also had a kahuna. Um, if I look at the dollar, we talked about it being weak, struggling down here. If we look at um, the VIX, also struggling. If I look at gold, I think the word struggling comes to mind. Despite a weak dollar, it's below the 200. You know, I'm not a gold bug. I'm certainly not that bullish on gold, but I'll be much more bullish when it breaks 
and holds above the 50-day moving average, certainly above the 200. Silver, sliver, let's see what silver looks like. Now, again, a little bit of a, of a trying to move up, but lots of overhead supply and lots of moving averages to get through. And then just out of, for grins, oil. Oil looks high. And then you look at oil and you go, yeah, it's high. It's kind of where it tops out in the past. So, you know, oil is up there. Um, you know, oil has had a little run here from the low to where it closed. In 124 trading days, oil's up 32%. Um, it sort of looks like it's stalling here. So I'm not sure if um, you know is it in a box? But that's what, I'm not. I'd like to see it break out of the box or break under the box. But right now, oil's had a big run and is trading sideways. So all right. So I feel strong about the markets, although. I'd have to be an idiot not to think that we're overbought and at some point we're going to have to correct. But like I said, it may be after the new year and even a correction would just give us a pause potentially to refresh and go higher. If I look at my two-day up force, I can see that 80 securities are up. It was like 13 a day ago. If I look to the downside, not securities, rather, um, 80, secure, 80 industry groups, to the downside, it's only five. So MLPs, Specialty Pharma, Precious Metals, to the downside. Take a look at some of the ones to the upside. And we see banks, semiconductors, e-commerce, entertainment, wealth management, app software, infrastructure software, apparel, REITs, biotech. So wealth and, and money seems good. If I do a right click here, the SVP, this is one I mentioned that looked interesting. It's, a, it's, a, it's got U.S. and international branches. Um, it's had a hell of a run. Um, let's go down to my... A lot of people have asked for this view, this no VSA view. It's really not rocket science, folks. Go down to my webinar view, 1214. And you see all the VSA stuff. Edit it. Go to price. Take away the VSA stuff. And then you get the webinar views and no VSA. That's all I did. So SIVB um, based for a year. Broke out here, multiple pocket pivots. Weekly bongo turned green up here. Viable gap up right here and continues to go higher. It's a very expensive stock. Um, don't know enough about it to advocate it except to say chart looks incredibly strong. And that, frankly, was the only bank that made it above the index. Let me just see what happens when I play my scaled version. Now, in my scaled version, the difference is I'm looking at volume compared to prior volume. So SVB, SIVB, still is to the top. Let's see if anything else looks good here. Wintrust Financial, Kahuna, Pocket Pivot, out of a squeeze, sitting on the 50. Prosperity Bank Shares, looks like that one wants to go higher. Texas Capital Bank Shares. So... What I do on my scaled one, and this is the time I use the scaled one when I only see one group come up, if you think about force index, force index is today's close minus yesterday's close times volume plotted, and you take a 2 and a 13 day. So that gives you an artificial benefit to any stock that has high volume uh, on a regular basis. The scaled takes today's volume as a percentage or as a fraction of the usual volume. So if I have really big volume today, I'm 3x normal, that multiplies a change by 3. If on the other hand I have big volume but it's the same as normal, it multiplies it by 1. 
So something I'm still playing with. So banks look strong. Semiconductor devices. NVIDIA. Sometimes I don't know whether I want to short this or buy this thing. Um, broke down below the 50. Um, you know, is this a bear flag? And is it going to break down further? That would be my bet. Um, slowing earnings per share growth is not always a big thing. Stocks had a huge run, but sometimes it's tough to short the big leaders. Intel looks to me at a great buy point. Nice run up, pull back to the 50. So let's just compare the two. NVIDIA has cut through the 50, putting in a bear flag, and to me it wants to go lower. Yet Intel has pulled back to support at a kahuna, a pocket pivot, a mobile breakout from the squeeze, and the weekly bond go is green. Intel is one of my favorite looking stocks for potential buy. Now, if we look at this further, the high of the day was 44.84. The close was at 44.56, and the low here, this would be the lowest in, in many bars, was 42.67. So I could put my, my, my stop right around here at 42.65. I could put my buy at 485 I've got about a 5% risk. And frankly, if it closes below the 50, I'd be out of it the next day. So I like Intel because it's a very good buy position. And it's a very easy stop to set. Also at a PSAR reversal on Friday. Broadcom at another good buy zone. Now, I'm less impressed with the more recent activity here than I was with Intel. But it pulled back to the 50. Its weekly bongos are negative, which is a, a negative. But it's sitting on the 50. Didn't have the same momentum come in. Texas Instruments breaking out at a new high. Micron has got earnings this week. AMD has broken down. So I look at this, and the one I like the most is Intel Corporation. E-commerce discretionary. Breaking out to new highs. This one ran up some on some crazy shenanigans with Bitcoin. They're going to take Bitcoin or something. And anytime you say you're a Bitcoin player, you become on fire. Amazon. Nice uptrend. Sort of slowed down here. Waiting for a catalyst. Earnings are not to February. Someone needs to tell Bezos he needs to announce that they're becoming a Bitcoin um, trading partner. And then all of a sudden it'll be a Bitcoin marketplace and Amazon will be at 5000 I could only dream. I am kidding. And Baba has broken down. eBay poised to break out to new highs. If you don't believe me about the Bitcoin joke, here's a company called Riot Blockchain. How often do you see real companies with real fundamentals go from four bucks in October to over 28 before year's end? The funny thing about Riot Blockchain is it was a biotech company, a failed biotech company that spent $12 million to buy some assets in Bitcoin, changed their name to Riot Blockchain, and now it's a high growth performer. You can buy puts on this stock just to let you know that I've been looking. Problem is, as long as Bitcoin's hot and people like my son, God love him, are, are, are making tons of money in Bitcoin, people are going to think that Riot is a real company. Entertainment content. Obviously, we've got the Disney and Fox tie up causing some aberrations here. And you could see that these guys had a nice run this week. Um, not enough growth in this name for me to play. 21st Century Fox, also not enough growth. 
This one looked interesting to me, Discovery, not because of its growth. It had a, a gap up on Friday on a pocket pivot on good volume. It actually looked really good in my trade station. Let's take a look at it. Disc A. What I saw here was a stock that had a buy signal on Thursday, multiple momentum signals, OBV going up on daily and weekly, high close dodgy on the weekly, and look at the turnaround candle on the monthly. So I actually liked this, the chart on Discovery. You can look at the uh, strength of the group index, but keep in mind it is below the 200-day moving average. That's about it there. I'm going to go down to wealth management. Changed. Don't know anything about, I guess, Seabird. That was that Muriel Seabird brokerage. Never mind. Brokerages have been hot. Um, they look like they became a Bitcoin company. Don't know what's going on there. I probably would have to figure out if this isn't a mistake. I haven't heard her talk for years, S-I-E-B. I thought she got bought, to be honest. So let's just look at Finviz. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't help myself. Brokerage Siebert's financial shares double on blockchain plans. Tulips. Holy cow. Charles Schwab. I guess they'll be doing it too, but nice growth. Uh, nice looking stock here. Um, I don't know, probably too far gone. E trades looked equally good. TD Ameritrade, you know, not at all extended. Um, nice uptrend. Um, small dividends. So the brokerages look good. I can't believe Siebert blockchain. Application software Adobe had earnings this past week. Sitting right below, above the 50, I'd look for some more momentum, but did have a, a um, viable gap up and then closed down after it gapped up. That bothers me some, some a lot. I like the earnings per share picking up here. Activision Blizzard, the gaming stocks continued to look strong. This one is at a quadruple top. Um, frankly, a breakout from this point could be very interesting. So you could almost say that we are at an interesting point. And if this stock breaks out of this box, I may want to be long. But at first, it's got to break out of the box. So Activision, Blizzard, EA, and the other gaming stocks also look strong. Here's pullback to support. Had a kahuna, a pocket pivot, mobile breakout from a squeeze, electronic arts. Um, one quarter is going to stub, and then it's got some great earnings growth coming in. And then take two interactive, also at an interesting buy point. I think I like electric arts the best because it's sitting on its 200 with some momentum. Um, but that... Activision Blizzard, if it can break out of that box, um, is probably in the best buy point. Infrastructure software. I didn't like Microsoft this week as much as I liked Intel, to be honest. Why? Microsoft, um, nice uptrend. Um, you'd be buying it at all-time high. The growth is slowing down. It did have a mobile breakout. It did have a pocket pivot in a kahuna. Um, do you buy high to buy higher, or do you buy the pullback to go higher? I'd rather buy Intel, but Microsoft does look pretty good here. Akamai, nice run here. Um, mobile breakout, 
excuse me, a squeeze, pocket pivot in a kahuna, not much in the way of earnings growth. Service now, nice uptrend moving up off the 50. So all of these stocks look okay in this group, at least the first ones we looked at. Apparel footwear, they're back. And you believe Under Armour coming to the top of the list. Big upgrades and a 10% move. Um, unfortunately, it's a big move off of bad numbers, but a Kahuna over the 50, everything turning green. Um, is it worthwhile to play a little bit of Under Armour? If you like buying bottom fishing stocks that are probably recovering, why not? You can put your stop under the 50. Under Armour looks interesting here. Crocs, nice uptrend and then accelerated on Friday. Getting extended. Nike, I'm hearing a lot of positive things there, but it's had a big run. The F Corp, probably doing well because of the winter weather. And Skechers. So you look at these, and do you buy these stocks that have had the big moves? Or do you go back and say, I'm buying Under Armour. I think there's lower risk in Under Armour, to be honest. You can put a dollar, stop, get underneath that 50. Um, possibility. REITs were all over my group, and it was interesting. This was one of my favorites, um, <clears throat> the DDR, which is surprising to me because it's a shopping center rip, REIT, REIT, as is Simon P Property Groups. But maybe they're done going down. Um, Kind of looks like Under Armour, doesn't it? A couple kahunas, out of a squeeze, new weekly bongo green, great earnings per share growth, pays a huge dividend yield. All you can lose is nine bucks on a share. I think it looks interesting. DDR Corp, Simon Property Group, breaking above the 200, looks even better, pays a 4.4% dividend. Boston Properties, Breaking out above the 200 with a kahuna, pocket pivot, mobile breakout from a squeeze. Um, I guess people are not worried about shopping centers anymore. This one's more office out towers. So REITs look strong. Host Marriott, Financial Trust. So a lot to like on the REITs. And then lastly, biotech. Make a few comments here. All this talk about price controls and things, every time you hear that, these sell off. Um, they still move mostly on data and approvals. Biomarin kind of sideways, had some good news about a week back. You can see the stock responded. Gilead, hard for me to buy Gilead, pays a 2.8% dividend. The Hep C franchise, which is their platinum child, is probably maxed out. They made a couple of acquisitions in the oncology space. They're not big enough, in my opinion, to move the needle. Although Kite is a, was great for me because I had a big Kite position. They have a great product, but it, and it's 400000 a dose. But how many patients will it have? But the one I would be buying, and I am accumulating here, is Celgene. Here's a company that has a tendency to project its earnings out three, five years in, in advance, and they overdid it, and they had to take down their long-term number, and they had a quarter miss, and you can see first was taken down the long-term number, and here's the miss of the quarter, or vice versa, but they've made it up from 96 to about 110 since the middle of October, which is about 15, 16% return. Look, at it's got earnings per share growth greater then it's PE, which to me is a underpriced stock. Um, if it can get above the descending 50, I think it can run back up to the 120, 125, and that's why I'm long Celgene. You know, the fun ones are things like Sage, which are companies that are small companies that get some positive data and look like they're being bought out, but that's just on the basis of promising data. So that's going through the top 10. So my top-down review always starts with the markets, of which I'm cautious but bullish, followed by which industry groups are leading. Then I look for the top stocks. Now, I also do a bottoms-up review where I go through a number of scans just to point out some of the favorites that I have within HGSI. 
go under my name, I like to look at stocks that had big volume. And you could see that there were 93 stocks that had big volume. Um, several of these we've looked at already. Um, Snyder's Lance, I think they make pretzels. Something that, are they into Bitcoin too? I doubt it. Let's see what, they, what their story was. They must have had some earnings come out. A deal. Okay, they're being bought. That'll explain that. Seabirds was Bitcoin, SVP. We looked at this early on. Shift Pixie, application software. Um, something happened here, but I don't usually buy things that have been pegged at $3 for a long time. Crocs was a shoes. Acme we looked at. Um, Univar, this one showed up on my list as well. Specialty chemicals, it's been going sideways for a long time. What I noticed was a Bible gap up on Friday, a squeeze, a mobile breakout, a pocket pivot, and a kahuna, and that made my list as well. So I like to look at the stocks that had lots of volume come in. I like to look at pullback to the 50 with moving average with a kahuna. Um, there's Electronic Arts, FMC, which is in the oil patch, which is not necessarily where I want to be. Actually, Ag Chemicals, I'm sorry is sitting here right at the 50, had a pocket pivot and a kahuna. I like this list a lot. Um, Maxim, uptrend, pullback to the 50. Looks a lot like Intel, doesn't it? Pocket pivot, kahuna sitting on the 50. I like that one a lot. Um, here's a great place to find some good stocks. Surprised that Intel didn't make the list. Must have moved too far off. So these will all be stocks that had an uptrend, now sitting on the 50 and had a kahuna. Spirit Realty, another REIT. Um, retail, tenant, distribution, so a lot of different ownership. Not a beautiful chart, but if I just look right here, I see a kahuna, mobile breakout from a squeeze and an 8.4% dividend. I like looking at squeezing potential um, reversal to the upside. There's, uh, well, let's look at Royal Caribbean. Give me a, show you why I like this group. You have to be in a squeeze to be in this group, and you have to be within a certain amount of that PSAR dot. And why? Because if it moves up on Monday, it takes out that dot, it reverses, it's a new buy signal, and you notice it had a kahuna, a pocket pivot and a kahuna. So all the stocks in this list, here's FMC, uh, well, this one is not showing a squeeze, but it, and it already converted, so I'm not sure why that one made the list. That's interesting. Striker, there's your squeeze. Your, your PSAR dot just flipped. Simmons, your squeeze right below the PSAR dot. So those are some of the scans that I look at. Up here under custom groups, you see top 50. And if I click that open, you'll see the most recent ones. So if we look at some of those, Microsoft, Intel, Google, Facebook, Amazon. A lot of these have moved a lot, which is the problem. And then one of my other favorite places to look is Gallardi Sprinters. These are fundamentally and technically strong stocks, but they're not necessarily in bases. Costco, what a nice move Costco has had. Seabrook, we already talked about. Crocs, we already looked at. Best Buy, who would have thought Best Buy is a growth stock again? So those are some of the things that I use. Probably my favorite place, and where we'll end up tonight, is in TradeStation. I can't duplicate this in HGSI, but one of my favorite buy signals is a John Person signal. The Trilogy buy setup. And... MA Telecom, MTSI, actually looked good. Let's see what the hang up here is. This is on which? All right. Why did I like this? It's sitting down here. Nah, it's not my choice. We look at applied materials. That might be the one. All right. Here's applied materials. 
this is a automatically um, written support and resistant lines, support lines. So I'm sitting, broke out above resistance, sitting right above support, a new PPS buy signal. I like to apply material, but the point of this trade is three things have to happen. One, I have to have a new buy signal. Number two, I got to break above what's called the last conditional change line, which is this dark gray line. And the third thing is I have to be coming down in price, but coming up in volume. So there's a divergence. And this is John Person's trilogy buy signal. So I actually am set up here to find stocks that meet the, tr the trilogy buy signal. Not all of them are stocks I want to buy. Here's Intrexon sitting on support, which I like to see. It's come down some before the buy signal. Volume continues to go up. It has a new buy signal and took out the last conditional change. So I can actually go back, and on Wednesday, I was watching this in the morning. Is it Wednesday? Let's see. One of these days, it was, must have been here. We're going to see price line. So I want to back down a couple days here. And I'm watching the charts. And what did I see? I saw price line has been coming down, sitting right on support, had a buy signal, took out the last conditional change, and volume is heading up. So I actually did an option position that needed it to go up 10 points for me to make a decent return. So So right here is the 13th, the high of the day was 1746, and the 14th, he had a 24 point move and I took my trade off. I needed a 10 point move to make money, I got a 20 point move, and then on the 15th, It actually traded up and then reversed up to 1775. This is a very powerful reversal signal, the trilogy buy signal, and one that I like to run. So what I do is I run my scans every night. I do my top-down review looking at the markets, the top 10 industry groups, and then I go into a couple of my bottoms-up scans, the trilogy being my favorite, and then I put together my buy list, I stick them into a radar screen. And then I sit during the week and I look for signals to start flashing at me. On that note, I'm going to say good night, goodbye, have a great trading week. To those that are my recent students, we will be doing a Thursday program. I'll be sending out an invite probably tomorrow once I confirm the time with the boss. Um, and you all have a great holiday season, and I'll talk to you hopefully next week unless I get bogged down by the holiday. Bye, everybody.